Hello, thanks for attending this month's webinar. My name is Rich and I work here at Tech Support. Today's webinar is on two and a half axis facing procedure. This procedure is not brand new, it's been around for a couple of versions. But I started seeing a few more people use it and thought it'd be a good idea to make a webinar and show the people that haven't had the time to check it out what it can do. The procedure itself is very easy to set up. It doesn't require picking any contours or geometry as it uses the stock and part geometry defined from the NC setup. This procedure best works with an NC setup but does not have to be used with your NC setup. And I'll show you the differences and what to look out for if you're not using the NC setup. Okay, let's take a look at how easy this facing procedure is to just get going. So first, we have an NC setup here and define the target part and the stock. For this stock, I'm gonna go a little bit bigger here, so we'll just bump it up to the top there and add a couple hundred on, on each side there. All right, and then uh, just jump into a toolpath. And the procedure we're going to use is a two and a half axis facing procedure. Here you can adjust the offset, but again, it's based on the target part here since we have safe milling active it's gonna stop at the very top so if you want to ad adjust anything you do it here so for the down step I'm just going to change this to something a little bit smaller and that's it and then just execute it and you can see no no geometry was selected no contours and it's all based off of the stock definition so that cleaned up the entire stock on the top. If this were to be using a, a contour, this is what that would look like. So you can see it stayed inside that that contour here or on it I would say and then just does that to the stock so in this case it's uh, much better just to leave the contour unselected let's say you were going to use this without an NC setup okay and if you are using this procedure as a regular two and a half axis procedure without safe milling and without an NC setup using part and stock you'll have to take a couple additional steps you will have to make sure that you have a boundary you'll have to pick your part surfaces and you'll have to make sure that your Z bottom is correct so let's take a look at that a little more deeper okay we're back with this electrode here and let's take a look at uh, what it would be like if you did not use an NC setup. So I'm going to just delete this and make a toolpath. Now one thing that this procedure does require is stock. So no matter what you have to use stock. And I'm gonna again just add a couple hundred to that. So now there is just a toolpath and stock so with that you get no safe milling because the part in the stock need to be inside the NC setup to utilize safe milling. So we're just going to make a procedure here. Again, two and a half axis facing. I'm going to change this back to what that was. For this scenario, I'm going to set a Z bottom and I'm going to just put it right here at this level. 
So I'm going to execute that now. You can see that it does still use the stock. Without a contour, it's, it's still cutting to the stock, but it's going right through the electrode. So in order to fix that, if you're using if you're using this without an NC setup, you either have to select the top of the geometry or pick your part surfaces. So here I'm going to just pick the part surfaces. The Z bottom here is still set right there at that level, and we'll just re-execute that. So now you can see that it stops at the highest point. So it is safe. It does keep it safe even though it's not safe milling, but there's just a few extra steps there to define. You can also use a like a variable here, like max surf z. So this will just keep it at the highest point of the faces that are selected. So if you use a variable like this and you don't select any surfaces, you can see that that now with that variable it's at zero. So it would cut to the basement. So that's just one thing to keep in mind there if you are using safe or sorry if you're using this procedure without safe milling. It just requires a little more steps paying attention to to get the procedure in the correct Z height. All right, the next part we're going to look at is a non-symmetrical part. And again, the facing procedure does a great job cutting the top of the block without selecting any part surfaces or using any boundaries. There's also a spiral option. So if you need to use a spiral cut, uh, you can also use a variable sidestep which is nice and it also has a, a true spiral option to hide any transition lines and let's take a look at that. Okay here is our non-symmetrical part. And we're gonna start again by using target part inside the NC setup. also wanted to show this. Uh, this is a, just a quick way to define stock that is a little uh, more non-traditional than just a quick bounding box or a box. If you go by contours, here you can select the contours here, but uh, go into the advanced selection and try 2D bounding. So the 2D bounding will take a, a box and put it around the outside here. But one cool thing is that you have a couple different options here besides box. You can choose by circle or by enclosed polygon which just kind of connects each, each line based off of the the tangent points for for each outside face. So this could be a uh, a nice option to use if you're trying to get a little bit closer to the actual stock and and you don't have the services there to to select. So we'll use this polygon. Set a Z top and the bottom is already set there. So you can see now that the stock here is a nice polygon shape. Now this probably isn't the right Z, X, Y, Z location to, to fit into a vise with this arc here on the back, but we'll just let it go. Again, just go into a tool path, start the procedure, two and a half axis facing, I'll change this. Let's give this stock here though a little bit extra on top. Everything else here I'm going to leave the same. Actually, you know what? Let's show that spiral here and changing this from basic to advanced. 
you can get this true spiral option. So we'll throw that on there too. And we're just going to bump up the stock here. Okay. And just run this procedure. So this is a spiral with the with the true spiral option. So you don't see any transition lines while it's working its way in. And it does start from the outside and collapse to the inside. And just one last slide here before we go on to the next part. And that's uh, the trajectory options here with the down steps. There is an option here to do a fixed plus horizontal planes, which that's what we've been using. Or you can do just a finish only, which will just give you one pass at whatever Z level you're using. Okay, let's go into another part. Okay, now let's take a look at what this facing procedure can do with multiple parts in the same file. It's set up with four different target parts. And the stock is defined by contour. And there's four different contours here. And if we look from the side view, you can see that all of the parts have the same Z height. So let's make a procedure now, the same that we did before. This in a side view. And see what happens if we if we make it just how we did before. So again, two and a half axis facing. And I'm gonna just leave all of this here the same. Actually we might even be able to put a little bit more on that just to hurry this along. Okay. And now that it's finished here, you can see that it starts above just how it's supposed to, but the Z bottom level is the exact same as the highest point of of all of these. So it's treating it as one as one object. The way we can make this a little better here is go back in and use the boundaries option. And I'm going to select this by criteria. Okay. And when we execute this now, can we take a look at this? Now you can see that each procedure is going down to its own Z height. And what happened here was by adding contours, it tells the system that we want to treat each group separately. So now each one will go down to the Z, height, uh, Z top of whatever is defined here in the procedure. Okay, and so this is good, but it could be a little bit better. And to do that, we're going to adjust the stock here. And instead of going by contours, we're going to go by surfaces. And here we're going to select those surfaces by sets here. I made some stock faces just above each part. And that's going to act as the, the top of each block for stock purposes. And then I'm just going to select the bottom here. So now you can see that the stock is different for each block. And we'll re-execute that. Okay, now that that's finished, take a look. 
You can see that now there's it's doing the same amount of passes, well, except for that one because of the stock, but they all look relatively close to the same, and it's just a much more efficient uh, facing procedure. Okay, lastly, let's look at a way to incorporate this facing procedure into a quick rougher starter NC template. Here we have a, another electrode, and again we'll start by putting a facing procedure on there. Two and a half facing, and just execute that. I like to have my paths going the longest direction, so we'll fix that here. That's under advanced, and then by local geometry, you can either choose shortest or longest. I like longest dimension. And then I like to put a path that goes around the outside just to take care of any excess material that may be uh, left there if it's mounted up too big. So for that procedure, we'll use a helical profile. That's also in 2.5 axis. Helical closed profile. For the Z top, we're going to set that with a variable here. We're going to use the target, the max target part in Z. So target, sorry, max target Z. For the bottom, we're going to select that by criteria. So by criteria, and we're going to choose by color. and by face. So that's going to select that base here and we want to use the highest point. That will stick that right here. Okay, so now that is set to 600. We also need a contour. So for that we're going to select that by criteria as well. Again that purple color and again the face. Here we're going to use the boundaries option and say from vertical walls. That's going to select that contour just how you see it on the screen. Save and close and save this template. I'm going to stick it here in the facing webinar folder and we're going to save this as a multi tool path. Okay, so now this is a template we can apply to any electrode. But for this case, we're just going to open this electrode back up. And apply that template. and then just execute that. All right, and now you can see that there is a quick rougher template here that will work on any electrode. It will cut the top and run around the outside. And that's all I got here for the facing webinar. And we can open it up for any questions. Just go ahead and type those in the chat if you have any. Or send any questions you have to us at support. That's support-us at symmetron.com. Or go to our Connect site and submit any tickets there. Thanks.